Last week I had to drive into town to run some errands, and on the way home, about a mile from my house, the car died on me. And I tried to start it to no avail, it just kept turning over vr, 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 and, uh, and didn't start. So I parked the car by the side of the road and started walking to my home. But I was lucky enough that a nice lady drove past and asked if I needed a ride, so I took her up on that offer. And she drove me home, and then a little bit later, my dad came over and we pulled the car home. So I've done some cursory diagnostics, and I'm reasonably certain that the problem is the crankshaft position sensor. Here's a demonstration of what it does. You turn the car on, the fuel pump comes on and everything, but no go and I've determined that there's no spark getting to the spark plugs. So today I'm going to replace the crankshaft position sensor and hopefully get my car back on the road. The crankshaft position sensor tells the computer when to fire the spark plugs and lets the computer know that the engine is actually turning. So if the sensor is not operating correctly, the engine won't run. This is the connector for the crankshaft position sensor. However, the sensor itself is buried deep within the bowels of the engine behind the timing belt cover. So the first step is to remove the negative battery cable. I've removed the negative battery cable and the next step is to remove the alternator belt right here. To do that, I first need to loosen the bolt on this idler pulley right here, if you can see that, and then I need to release the tension from the belt with this Allen screw right here. So I'll first get my wrench in here. I've placed my 14 millimeter wrench on the bolt that secures that idler pulley and now I'm going to loosen it. It's hard to get my hand in there so I'm just going to use this piece of wood and press on it. Take two. Ha. loose enough now that I don't need the, the board to press on it. And now that that bolt is loose, I can loosen this Allen bolt right here to release the tension from the belt and remove it. I was able to loosen this Allen bolt with a screwdriver to make it go quicker because I don't have an Allen wrench um, socket that I can run down there with an extension so it was kind of cumbersome using just a little Allen wrench so that's a tip if you don't have the proper uh, Allen wrench adapter for your socket set is just use a screwdriver. I have that idler loose enough now that I can pull the belt off down here on the crankshaft pulley pull this up out of the way and the next belt to remove is this one that's attached to the water pump and this one's a little bit more difficult to access the tensioner for it is down under here if 
if you can see it but it's the same process there's a bolt that I need to loosen and another allen wrench bolt that I need to access that's um, accessible from the top here I've got my wrench on that idler pulley down there if you can see it and now I just need to pull up real hard on it to loosen that bolt. I was able to get the bolt free for that idler pulley. I ended up using just a standard socket wrench with a 14 millimeter socket. It was a little bit easier on the hands because this nice rounded handle uh, didn't hurt as much when I was pulling on it as the sharp handle of this wrench did. So I got that loose. The next step is to fish way down in here and loosen the Allen bolt uh, tensioner. If you can even see it, I'll try to get a good view of it. There it is. So I'm going to try to just use my long screwdriver to get down there because I don't think my Allen wrench will fit. I was able to run this long screwdriver down there to loosen that bolt. So I'll just loosen this enough that I can remove that second belt. I've got this belt loose enough now that I can remove it. The next step is to remove this crossover tube right here. I'll start by disconnecting the ignition module. And a couple of 12 millimeter bolts. After the bolts are removed, I can loosen these hose clamps. And this should just come right out. Now that the crossover tube is removed, I can take off this upper timing belt cover. It's held on by some 8 millimeter screws. I've removed all of the bolts for this upper timing belt cover. They were all pretty easy to get to except the one way down behind here. I had to use this uh, universal uh, one quarter joint um, and a 5 16 socket to remove the bolt. But all the others were really easy to remove. Well, it looks like the cover doesn't want to come off unless I remove this uh, damper thing. And I've also moved the power steering fluid reservoir out of the way. So I'll take out these two bolts and move this thing out of the way, and that should hopefully allow the timing cover to come off. I've got the upper timing belt cover off. I ended up having to remove the battery and also the bracket that holds this little damper thing. But that's off and the next step is to unplug the connector for the crankshaft position sensor and start feeding it down through here so we can remove it. I was able to get the connector out from behind this cover. It was a tight fit but it was able to do it. The next step is to jack up the car and remove the wheel because the rest of the work will be done behind the fender here. I've removed the wheel and the next step is to remove this plastic fender liner so we can access the crankshaft pulley. To do this 
I just need to remove all these little plastic fasteners and there's some screws along the inner edge of the fender. I've removed the plastic fender well so I can access the crankshaft pulley because that's what I need to remove next. It's a three-quarter inch socket. It's probably some millimeter size too, but three-quarter works. What I'm going to do is place the socket with my breaker bar like this and it's wedged in here against the frame and then I'm just going to go into the car and bump the starter, just touch it, and that should break the bolt free. I've hooked up the battery again just temporarily so I can do this. So I'll go into the car now and tap the starter. Well, as you could see, that didn't work. So my next brilliant idea is to put the wheel back on and place the breaker bar on the pulley as I had it before. But this time I'm just going to roll the car down my driveway. I've been blessed with a driveway that has an incline and just pop the clutch in gear like I'm bump starting the car and hopefully that will break the bolt free. Well that did the trick. I put it in fifth gear and started rolling and pop the clutch and almost immediately the bolt came loose. As you can see in here it's loose now so I can remove that and remove the pulley but first I need to drag the car back up to its workstation. Now that I have the bolt out of the crankshaft, it's time to remove the pulley. I'm not the type of person that usually has the correct tool for the job, but in this case I do. It's a bolt puller. I got it for 10 bucks from Harbor Freight. And I need to thread these uh, bolts into these bolts in the pulley, and then I can remove it. The puller is now installed and I should be able to just turn this center bolt and it should pull off the pulley. I've got the pulley loose enough to come off but I can't remove it yet because this bolt is pressed up against the frame. So I'm going to remove this bolt and then I'm going to spin the crankshaft to remove the bolt up here and then I can pull off the pulley. In hindsight, it would have been better to start this process with both of the bolts uh, below this frame rail. But oh well. So that's there's the puller and there's the pulley. Next, I'm going to remove this lower timing belt cover. It's held on by just a few of these 8mm bolts. last bolt and this cover should come right off. And right in there is the part that needs replacing. The last step in removing the sensor is removing the two screws that secure it to the engine. It wasn't necessary to remove the middle timing belt cover because the sensor wire actually just passes over the top of it. I've removed the screws that secure the sensor to the motor, but I need to rotate the crankshaft a little bit because there's a slot cut in this plate that allows the sensor to come out. So I need to move the crankshaft a little bit. You might be able to see the, um, the slot there. It's just a cutout in this plate. I moved the crankshaft just a little bit. I did this by just putting the pulley back on temporarily and twisting it by hand. But now the sensor should 
come right off. And that's how to remove a crankshaft position sensor on a Ford Taurus SHO. Thanks for watching.